The worst experience I ever had a, as a journalist by a long way was 1981 Springbok Tour um, because I, from the time I was old enough to know what the game was, I was a rugby tragic and I still am. I still love the game. And this is, so this is my game, the game that has been so precious to me for the whole of my life. And suddenly in 1981, it completely divides the country. And the violence during the 81 Springbok Tour really was quite extraordinary. And I think um, 20 years after the tour was over, I interviewed Graham Perry, who was the policeman in charge of security for the flower bomb test at Eden Park in 1981. And um, Graham said to me, and I agree with him 100% when I look back on it, that the miracle to him was that New Zealand got through the 1981 Springbok Tour without anybody dying. But what it did leave behind was an incredibly divided country. I've been very lucky to interview an awful lot of people, but I suppose the sports interview that sticks out for me is Arthur Lidgett, um, because Arthur Lidgett was a man that just had a fire and a spark in his belly that was unlike almost any other person I've ever interviewed. He was the guy that coached Peter Snell and Murray Helberg to double gold in the Olympics in Rome in 1960. And he was such a fiery guy. And he had one great phrase I remember him using. He was saying how he'd sacked a very promising runner from his camp because she was seeking advice from other coaches as well. Uh, and he said, time is the one thing that you can't buy and you can't get more of. So treat it absolutely preciously. When you met the man, it was something about the drive behind him and the way that he could convince other people. And it played forward to 1974 when Dick Taylor won the 10,000 metres. Arthur Lidgett got him um, and spent about an hour, apparently, two days before the final and just convinced Dick, who was a wonderful runner, but didn't have a lot of self-confidence, that he was the best runner in the world. And that was how he ran that day. <laughs> My favourite test match... It took me a decade for it to be my favourite test match. It was the 1995 Rugby World Cup final at Ellis Park in Johannesburg. And once I'd got over the, you know, <laughs> the very xenophobic thing of the fact that the All Blacks lost to South Africa, once I'd got over that, looking back on it, I realised, and at the time too, really, it was the most extraordinary event. It was, of course, Nelson Mandela. The apartheid era had just finished in South Africa. Nelson Mandela was the president. He walked onto the ground wearing Francois Pinard's jersey and it was, everything about it was amazing. And it, that night in Johannesburg, which is at times in parts of Johannesburg are very scary places, but that night I remember talking with um, a lovely bloke that uh, ran the motel that Peter Bush, Bob Houghton, our journalist and photographer, were staying at. Uh, and he said, that's the one night in Johannesburg where you could go anywhere and be completely safe because the Rainbow Nation was just so incredibly happy and thrilled with what had happened. The thing that happened with Canterbury and Crusaders rugby, I think, that's made them leaders for, God, what is it now, 20 or 20, more than 20 years, really, is that they were very lucky. They had real quality people coaching from Wayne Smith to Robbie Deans to Toddy Blackadder to Scott Robertson. And they also had a thing that they were way ahead of their time. They were the first, the Crusaders, for example, were the first team in New Zealand, provincial or super rugby, to have basically a player's uh, official, somebody they could go to and say, and it was Steve Lancaster. And the players were able, for example, to go to him and say, I don't think I'm getting a fair deal from the coach. But a young player with no power whatsoever couldn't really speak on equal terms with his coach but Lancaster could speak perhaps on his behalf if the player wanted to, him, wanted them to. And it's, I know it inc sounds incredibly cliched, but the fact is the Crusaders did treat people decently and they, that right from when they were very first successful right through to the last year. And that, I think, is what makes them so incredibly special. And, you know, again, sometimes when you're a sports journalist, you feel, God, am I just repeating cliches here? But the fact is... The Crusaders and Canterbury Rugby have something quite special. And the fact is you don't have to be a prick to be a winner. And that's the key, I think, to everything about the Crusaders. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.